Yes, we're in the middle of this historic presentation of the Sportsmax Zone where a few minutes ago we witnessed the signing of an MOU between Cricket West Indies and the West Indies Players Association. And uh, Dr. Kishore Shal, President of Cricket West Indies, CEO Johnny Grave and uh, Miles Bascom, who is Director of Cricket with Cricket West Indies, uh, about to discuss with us some of the key issues with this MOU. Let me start here, Dr. Shallow, because I was retracing some of the pronouncements of former presidents of uh, Cricket West Indies, well, as far back as when it was West Indies Cricket Board. And I saw an October 2003 comment from Teddy Griffith, who was president at the time, um, targeting a top three spot in the rankings for West Indies cricket because they were actually eighth at the time in test cricket, which we are now. So I could, I could interpret from that that 20 years ago today, there's a lot about West Indies cricket that, that hasn't changed. Um, the unity that we just saw and the sort of um, harmony that we just saw with the signing of the MOU, um, critical, so many key issues here. Um, Teddy Griffith uh, did say, as I just mentioned, that he would wish to have the team consolidate his position in a top three position in, in the countries. As I said at the time, it was, it, it was, they, were ranked, they were ranked eighth. But as I said when I spoke to Mariah earlier on, MOUs between Cricket West Indies and the West Indies Players Association haven't always been harmonious. And we have seen um, cases of real contentious, um, combative um, stances between, between the two bodies. I'm not getting the impression here. A good sign that you're on the same page, it seems. Certainly positive, Lance. And I'll go even further back to, to Sir Wesley Hall. When he, he was, was just before Teddy Griffith. Yeah, yeah, when he was president, and he would have made reference as well to some of the deficiencies that we had there and made some suggestions. And I mean, some of those issues are still relevant today. But I'm quite pleased with, you know, at least being able to achieve, you know, what I consider to be a very good and productive working relationship with West Indies Players Association. Um, and I want to express, you know, my, my appreciation to President Wavell Hines and his entire team, including. Wayne Lewis and the others. Um, it, it's remarkable. Um, great representation of the members who are very important stakeholders of West Indies cricket. And, you know, with this MOU, there's a, a, a degree of excitement about us not only addressing, you know, matters for men, but also the, 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 the issues surrounding women's cricket. And I'm sure that many today, current and future players, are very inspired by this MOU. Yeah, I want to go back quickly to the graphic that we just showed because Ken Gordon was the West Indies Cricket Board president that came immediately after Teddy Griffith. And after the team's uh, disappointing showing at the 2007 World Cup, which was hosted in, in the Caribbean, he had suggested that this issue of uh, changing little by little things regarding the governance of West Indies cricket needed to be changed. And the incremental approach, he said, to change... Uh, that was used in the past did not and will not work and uh, the rebuilding process would uh, have to see uh, drastic changes. Um, can you talk to me about governance of West Indies cricket in the past years that you've followed and uh, what this MOU represents now and if it is as Ken Gordon had said 14, 15 years ago, that there, were need, there was a need for drastic changes and not incremental changes. Does this MOU, as far as you're concerned, represent solid, massive changes, or is it just tweaking some of the things that you've had before? This is a significant step in, in, in West Indies cricket. Um, just, just the fact that you, you have our entire, you know, st well, the, the stakeholders in this case, all the players, both male and female, um, being addressed in this, and there are other matters, other issues that you would see once you really, you know, of course, at some point we'll release the MOU to the public. But you would see that there are changes there in the entire system, in the entire structure and relationship between the two parties that are going to impact um, the development of West Indies. And what we want is to, uh, to encourage players. Players must have confidence in the system. Um, there are other 
challenges that we currently face with franchise cricket and so on. And in this case, what I believe we are doing is be proactive in addressing these before we start a, a further talent chain for, for our players. So I would say a remarkable step. And again, I, I commend all those involved in the negotiations. I mean, it has taken months, as you would imagine. Yeah. And so to get to this stage is a remarkable achievement. Yeah, Ricardo, we'll talk with uh, the Weeper representatives, uh, Lewis and Heinz, in just a moment. But, uh, Johnny, as the CEO of Cricket West Indies, um, I know you bear the brunt of a lot of criticism from Caribbean fans who decades ago would be gloating and, and boasting globally about the dominance of West Indies cricket. And it's into three decades now that the team has been struggling. One of the significant things I saw come out in the past couple of weeks is the prize money increase from US $30,000 for last year's four-day championship winners to $250,000 US dollars. That's, that's a massive leap, isn't it? Yeah, no, I think all the, um, uh, the sort of the headlines from this deal are remarkable. They are historic. I think we've, we've got over the period of the next four years a framework to pay um, you know, upwards of 2.5 million US dollars to our international players in prize money, and a similar amount for the for the uh, regional players as well. So there's a real focus that we put on this in terms of rewarding performances. Uh, we want to have a, a structure where the best players who perform individually and collectively um, benefit the most. And so the move towards increased prize money, the move to reward players who get into the starting eleven rather than just sort of coast in squads. Uh, has all been part of a strategic move to make the system tougher, uh, reward performances and, and get a real focus on winning. Yeah, one of the problematic issues for West Indies cricket in the past, Johnny, has been attracting major sponsorship to financially boost the infrastructure of the game in, in the region. Um, looking at this MOU, do you think it will attract the kind of financial input that you would need throughout the region to help to boost the, the, pro the project? Yeah, look, we, we hope, certainly hope so. I mean, we, we've had two very, very good years financially. In 2021, we had a, a deficit of over 23 million US dollars. We're now sitting here uh, subject to the final audit um, with, with over 12 million dollars in surplus. So and we're fo forecasting obviously a very good year this year. We had England to kick off the financial year, come to the region, and we've got the World Cup that we're hosting in June. So. Uh, it needs to be too, you know, a very good year because uh, 2025 and 2026 will be uh, more difficult years for us where we don't have England at, or India um, touring. But the nature of the business now is that we're, f we're working on a four-year cycle. So it's really important that we, we plan for when England and India come and then we have that money retained to get through uh, the years when they don't, but we don't have to adjust our cricket systems and structures. So to align the Weeper MOU for four years with our business model for four years uh, is really, really important. And uh, I think to, to have you know, what we're forecasting to be 60 million US dollars going to players over the next four years uh, mm -hmm. is, a, is a massive moment, an historical moment for our players. Mm -hmm. and, and for us, you know, we're confident with the long-term agreements we have in place. And with everything that we're doing, we can attract more long-term partners to, to hopefully surpass those numbers. This is all forecasts. And um, obviously, we want to be in a position where, at some point in this MOU, we can, we can go even further to reward our best-performing players yeah. and teams. As you talk about the issues of funding and so on, you were in the international media in the past couple of weeks, um, Johnny, talking about the structure of uh, test cricket, how it is set up financially just before Dave Cameron was beaten by Ricky Skerritt for the presidency in 2019. We have a graphic there about something he had said, which I think is instructive to um, the same comments that you had made. And he had referenced um, the structure of the international game at the moment. And uh, some of his comments had sounded pretty similar to some of the things you said with uh, England Australia and India, their posture in the financial setup in, in international cricket. And uh, he did suggest then that there would be a need to uh, put proper finances in place for the medium to long term uh, while they try to change the economics of, of world cricket. Can you, for the benefit of our Sports Max Zone viewers now, just reference quickly the point you were making recently regarding the financial setup of uh, international test cricket and uh, how it 
affects negatively West Indies cricket? Yeah, the, the model at the moment um, is very much that when the home team um, receives tours or host tours, they keep all the revenue. And consequently, when you go away from uh, home, you um, pay for all your players and you pay the international airfares to get there. And then the, the opposition board, um, the host board, in that, in that respect for away games, retains all the revenue. So we have a very high cost base here in the West Indies and we have a relatively low economic base. So we, we've got the two, two effects, really, high costs and low revenue for when we host teams and obviously when we go away there's there's enormous revenues from the major market so there's a big advantage to those other boards and and we just think that uh, world cricket could be so much better if um, if we shared uh, a more equitable uh, distribution of the revenues um, and we continue to make those points we made some games and obviously uh, in the past eight years all the men's events for the world cup were hosted by the big three uh, we're now about to embark on hosting a, a men's T20 World Cup that will have a big economic impact on the organisation as well as the whole region. So there have been changes made and obviously you know, England and India can't tour us really any more than they, they, they could in the last couple of years. But that, that's not really sustainable and, and, and can't benefit everyone. So we, we continue to talk and lobby for um, more of a sort of collaborative approach, more revenue sharing. Uh, because there's never been more money in the game and hopefully there's enough to go around for everyone to thrive and, and that's certainly our aim across the three formats and as you've seen here today as well for the, for the women's game which is growing immensely. Yeah, um, Miles Bascom, you're in your first year as director of, uh, of uh, cricket with Cricket West Indies and I saw we're with the MOU, some of the issues that are going to be addressed, CWI fitness and conditioning plan and, and policy. Um, that has been something that had been visited in previous administrations, can you can you hint as to what direction your your committee is looking at with regard to this fitness and conditioning plan and policy? Sure. Um, I think the first thing is that we we would like a fitness policy that has <clears throat> less of an effect on on selection. Um, so that has been an, a, a contentious issue over the last few years. Um, and we also want something that is holistic and all-encompassing, speaking to um, return to play protocols and, and, you know, something that is quite holistic and looks at the, the entire picture. Mm. Um, just can you expand on the point that you just made about the selection tying in with, with the fitness and conditioning policy as far as the selectors are concerned? Right. So, so previously we, we had a minimum criteria for yes. selection. Um, so that would have prevented some players from be, um, being able to be selected because the, the, the policy was that as selectors, as a selection panel, you couldn't consider a player until they have met that, that minimum criteria. Um, and obviously we know the nuances of, of fitness, different people you have, you know, you, you don't expect everybody to meet the same benchmark at the same time. Um, so we want that to have less of an effect um, so that is one thing that we will certainly look at closely and, and is likely to change. Yeah, the NOC um, certificates with regard to, to players, I see we're international. That has been in the news recently. Is that something that you consider, as far as the MOU is concerned, an, an urgent issue to deal with with West Indies cricket? I don't think we have, an, we have, an, we have a great issue um, where that is concerned generally. Um, we give our players the NOCs. We, we don't want to prevent anybody from earning. Um, we have embarked on having more communication with our, with our players um, so that way we can really have a, a, a good relationship. Um, we want, while we want to safeguard West Indies cricket and ensure that we have the best players playing, we are aware of what the global cricket landscape looks like. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be resilient and um, I think going forward in, in our approach, we are going to try to communicate more so that at the start of the year, we have a better picture of who would be available when, who would have engagements outside and you know, try our best to make sure that we have competitive West Indies teams going out on tours. Yeah, Dr. Shallow, when you came in as vice president with Ricky Skerritt as your president in 2019, you did come to the table as... Um, for want of a better term, a, a player-friendly administration. You did present a, a, a project that appeared to be um, player-inclusive. And, and are you satisfied that 
this recent administration is continuing in that line? And is that part of the reason why your relationship with WIPA at the moment seems to be good? A critical component that I campaigned on in, in, in well, last year, um, before the taking of the presidency of Cricket West Knees, was to strengthen the relationship between CW and all the stakeholders. And the players, as I mentioned earlier, they are critical. Um, WIPA represent the interests of not, not only players, really, but the entire cricket landscape, cricket West Indies. And I think that is why we have been able to, to arrive at this, this MOU, which is favorable to, to both parties. But it, this is not uh, unique to just the players. I believe that we need to strengthen our relationship with government, um, corporate, Caribbean, and you know, other stakeholders. So this is, yes, Lance, I do agree that it is critical, but it, it cannot be just between the players and Cricket West Indies. It has to be with all our stakeholders. Yeah, and I guess having this Sports Max Zone presentation today and uh, how the platform is for us at the moment, it's kind of good that the, the boys did so well last night in, in Brisbane. They, they showed a lot of fight. They did, and you know, I've seen it in, in matches over the last few months as well series against India and England and they continue in, in Australia and I have absolutely no doubt that they're going to continue to you know um, represent us well and make us proud. Thank you very much Dr. Shallow, um, CEO Johnny Grave and uh, Miles Bascom who is the director of cricket with Cricket West Indies at the moment just in the past half an hour signing an MOU with the West Indies Players Association with uh, Waver Hines the president uh, getting ready along with Wayne Lewis to talk to Ricardo Chambers after the break.